Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Nathan Salas and today we have a very interesting video to react to by Dr. Suleiman Omar and he says that will Allah forgive me? That's the very question that we need to ask ourselves but then when we get onto the video we are going to know to whether God can forgive you when you sin or not so if today happens to be the first time of you taking out my channel don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out so guys before we get on to the video I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's religion this is basically for educational purposes and I believe that at the end of this video we all are going to learn from one another so guys without any further ado let's get down to this video and check this out they say your life flashes before your eyes when you have a near-death experience and when you have an inkling that death is at your door everything you've done wrong confronts you scene by scene by scene. Remember your sins? How could you possibly be ready to die? How could you meet your maker like this? Have you repented enough? Will Allah ever forgive you? Just as Allah made you more aware of your health now, He also made you more aware of your sins so that you can repent for them before you die and then find them as good deeds on the Day of Judgment. Look how merciful Allah is that with these last moments in your life, as you see those final blessings go and as the pain is increased, all expiating your sins, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala shows you things from your past so that you could seek forgiveness now and then find them as hasanats on your scrolls on the Day of Judgment. How much hope should we have in Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala in these moments? And Imam Ibn Kathir Rahimahullah Taala comments on a very famous example that we find in our tradition. There's this analogy that Ibn Al-Qayyim Rahimahullah gave us that the believer has two wings, the wing of hope and the wing of fear. How much hope should you have in Allah? How much fear of Allah should you have? And he says that the believer throughout their life should have a little bit more fear than hope. Because by having a little bit more fear than hope, that means you're going to interrogate yourself more. That means you're going to work harder. That means you're going to work with a greater sense of urgency. But al Hafid ibn Kathir rahimahullah said that as you start to die, the wing of hope should start to become higher than the wing of fear. Because at that point, you can't do many more deeds and you look to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't despair. You're in your bed and your flashbacks could paralyze you from seeing the forgiveness of Allah ahead or the blessings He's still surrounding you with. Remembering sins can be a blessing, especially if it motivates us to repent and makes us hopeful in Allah's mercy. But sometimes it can grip us with despair that makes us doubtful if there's any hope left for us at all. The shaitan is going to try several things at the time of your death. One way he may try is to make you heedless of Allah in your final moments so that he can get you to utter one displeasing word or die on one final evil deed. There's a famous story of Imam Ahmed rahimahullah that when he was dying, he was saying, La laysa ba'd, no, not yet. And his son asked him why he was saying that as he was between life and death. And he said, I saw shaitan in a dream and he was looking defeated. And he said to me, Oh Ahmad, you've escaped me. I've never been able to take you down. And Imam Ahmad rahimahullah said that I told him, No, not yet, as in the battle with shaitan lasts until the very last moment that you have on this earth. But he may also try to get you to despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that shaitan challenged Allah. And he said, By your glory, O Allah, I will not stop tempting your slaves so long as their souls are in their bodies. And Allah responds and He says, 
لا أزال أغفر لهم ما استغفروني By my glory and majesty, I will continue to forgive them so long as they ask me for forgiveness. So when shaitan tries to remind you of your sins, remember the mercy of Allah and the times that you did repent in the past. And if you find something you never did make amends for, do it now by making dua to the one who wipes clear the scrolls. Despair is always haram, but especially now. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله. Say, O oh my servants who have transgressed against themselves, do not despair from the mercy of Allah. حسن الظن in Allah, having a good opinion of Allah is always the best deed, but especially now. Jabir رضي الله عنه said, I heard the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم say three days before he died, لا يموتن أحدكم إلا وهو يحسن الظن بالله. Let not one of you die except with a good opinion of Allah. And as we reach the end of the road and our ability to perform deeds becomes less and less, it's time to turn to Allah in hope even if those deeds were imperfect. Abu Abdurrahman al sulami said right before his death, كَيْفَ لَا أَرْجُوا رَبِّي وَقَدْ سُمْتُ ثَمَانِينَ رَمَضَانَ How could I not have hope in my Lord and I have fasted for him 80 Ramadans? We don't rely on our deeds or consider them to be worthy in themselves, but instead we focus on the mercy of Allah that can turn the most deficient deed into a deed that takes us to Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ encountered a man that was crying out, Wa dhunuba, wa dhunuba, O oh my sins, O oh my sins. And the Prophet ﷺ said to him, instead of saying, O oh my sins, O oh my sins, say, Allahumma maghfiratuka awsa'u min dhunubi. ورحمتك أرجى عندي من عملي. O oh Allah, your forgiveness is vaster than my sins, and your mercy is far more hopeful to me than my deeds. The man said it, and the Prophet ﷺ said, repeat it again. So he repeated it again. And the Prophet ﷺ told him to say it again, and he said it again. And the Prophet ﷺ said, قم فقد غفر الله لك. Now Allah has forgiven you. The mercy of Allah is that great that sometimes it's stunning and it's hard to comprehend. And that's why when Mu'adh bin Jabal who heard the Prophet وسلم, say that whoever says La ilaha illallah will enter Jannah. And in one narration, whoever says La ilaha illallah will be forbidden from the fire. Mu'adh said, should I not go tell the people, Ya Rasulullah, this is great news. The Prophet وسلم, said, O oh, Mu'adh, let the people act. But at this point in your life, this might be the only act you still have left. And it only takes one sincere utterance of La ilaha illallah to be forgiven for eternity. And using your last breaths to say La ilaha illallah is better than anything else that you could be saying in these moments. Reconnecting with that fitrah that you came into this world with and hoping to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with those words while He is pleased with you. The mercy of Allah is so great that Jibreel alayhi salam saw it necessary to stuff sand into the mouth of Fir'aun out of fear that he might just repent and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive him as a result. Repeat the words that Fir'aun couldn't bring himself to say with sincerity and shaitan couldn't abide by due to his pride. Make dua and read Quran. Listen attentively to the people who taught you about Allah as they say their prayers upon you and to those you taught to read the Qur'an as they recite that word back to you. And even as they make du'a for you and you make du'a for yourself, remember getting to Jannah was never about your deeds. No one enters paradise by their deeds. Not even you, O Messenger of Allah, not even me, until Allah embraces me in His mercy. You have a Lord who loves to forgive and He would have rathered you an imperfect sinner than a perfect angel. The Prophet ﷺ said, if you were not to commit sins, Allah would have swept you out of existence and replaced you by another people who would sin and then seek Allah's forgiveness and Allah would forgive them. Don't you say at the end of Ramadan, Allahumma innaka afu and tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you are the one who forgives and pardons. You love to forgive, so forgive me. Well, as you come to the end of your life, let your fear of deficiency drown in your hope in Allah's mercy. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam entered the home of a young man who was dying. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam asked him, Kayfa tajiduk? 
how are you feeling? The young man responded and said, Ya Rasulullah, Arju Allah wa akhafu dhunubi. I have hope in Allah, but I fear for my sins. The Prophet wasallam said then glad tidings, because these two feelings are never combined in the heart of a servant in this situation, except that Allah will give him what he hopes for and save him from what he fears. لا يعظم الذنب عندك عظمة تصدك عن حسن الظن بالله فإن من عرف ربه استزخر في جنب كرمه ذنبه Let no sin reach such proportions in your eyes that it cuts you off from having a good opinion of Allah For indeed whoever knows his Lord considers his sins so insignificant compared to his generosity Believe in the good you've deposited with Allah for he has saved it for the moment when you can no longer do any deeds. If you love to meet Allah, then he loves to meet you. Aisha radiallahu anha said, but Ya Rasulullah, we all hate death. He said, it's not that, O Aisha. Once the believer is given the glad tidings of Allah's forgiveness and pleasure, he loves to meet Allah. So long as you've done your best with Allah and the people around you and strive to do good in this world, then your inevitable sins will be overlooked. And if you've done your best to prepare for this moment, then you can look forward to reuniting with family members who have passed on before you and a joyous return to your Lord to whom you have always belonged. Wow, that's very interesting um, video. Seriously, as I am um, listening to this video, I kind of feel this kind of fear inside my heart this is just what in and i am feeling two important things in this very video is what the wink of hope and then wink of fear but then i always say is that as a believer whenever you go on on your daily activities to do whatever you do for survival just allow that wink of fear to take over your life do you know why I'm saying so? It's because God has already said in his word that you should fear. And fear happens to be one of the attributes of God. So it's been expected of you to fear God. When you carry that wink of fear in you, and then you go about doing your deed, at that point in time, because of you have that fear and you fear God, you're not going to do anything that will make you to displease him so that we should not carry much more on the hope aspect right i want when you are to deal with people carry the wink of fear when you are to deal with god or you return back to god carry that wing of hope knowing fully where that whatever that you are going to ask of god or whatever you have done while you're dealing with people probably you have offended him and then you should be hoping that he is going to show you mercy and then forgive you because just like how Suleiman says in the video he says that good deed would never take you to heaven but it is god's mercy that is going to take you to heaven like that summarizes everything and in everything you understand that you are doing here on this very earth just know that when you go before god when you humble yourself you go before god you seek for forgiveness that he is going to forgive you it is the devil that will always make you to think that god is not going to forgive you but i just want to make you to understand that god can forgive you irrespective of whatever you have done both in the presence and in the past just know that god can have mercy upon you and then forgive you your sin don't feel like god is not going to forgive you and then it feels like let me just continue in the sin no don't continue in the sin is the devil that is speaking to you just know that God can have mercy upon you as far as you still have this bread as far as this bread of life has not been taken away from you just know that God can have mercy on you God can forgive you your sin irrespective of whatever you think that you have done just know that God can forgive you your sin but then it will be a worse thing you understand for you if you die and die a sinner that's just what you understand that we are all praying 
and hoping that we should not be in this kind of situation and that's the reason why i said that whenever we are doing let's make sure that we are carrying that wink of fear around us whenever we go about and assign doing whatever that we do for a living or whenever we are doing this whatever we are doing in this very world let's always carry that wink of fear along with us because it will kind of help us so that whenever you want to make a decision immediately you remember about the wink of fear the fear of god it will not make you to do some kind of things but then just like how um suleiman says that no one you understand can actually you understand go to heaven by his or her own good deeds but it's only by god mercy so that as you go about your deeds the fear of God to make you to what to be doing the right thing. But then it's not really about doing the right thing, but it's about you being humbling yourself and keep going to God and then seeking for forgiveness. That's just the most important part of it is just go before him, ask for forgiveness, hoping that he is going to show you mercy and he is going to forgive you. For our God is a loving God, is a merciful God. And irrespective of whatever we have done, he can be able to what show us mercy and forgive us. This is what the message I am leaving with you today. That irrespective of whatever you have done, it could be fornication, it could be gambling, it could be adultery, it could be anything that you know that what is not right in the sight of God. Please go before God and pray to Him to grant you that grace so that He can be able to overcome whatever you are doing that is wrong. And then when you do so, I am hoping that God is going to show you mercy and forgive you so that whenever this breath is taken away from you you can be able to make it to eternity so this is the end of my video if you like my reaction you should like share and subscribe if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so you remain blessed and i see you in my next video bye bye